In this video, we're going to revisit some of the graphs that we talked about in the last lesson, but with one key difference. In the last lesson, we were looking really just at the shape of the graphs and how the shape itself was able to describe what something was doing, if an object was speeding up or slowing down or moving at a constant velocity. Today, we're going to quantify some of those things a little bit more and look about how can you calculate different values just by looking at the motion graph uh, that you have. So to start us off, I just want to remind you of some of these shapes that we saw. Uh, these all seven here are different examples that we looked at in our last lesson. Uh, and all of these shapes were, were coming out of that. Now, just a couple reminders, a couple key things here. If something is constant, uh, constant velocity, we're looking at a straight line velocity on our displacement versus time. But if we're speeding up or slowing down, that's when we got these curves. Remember, we talked about the slope um, getting steeper meant that it was speeding up. So this was speeding up, but also this negative acceleration was speeding up as well because it was getting steeper, just steeper in the negative direction. Now, if we're looking at a constant velocity on a velocity graph, it just shows that the velocity itself isn't changing. So it's a flat line velocity graph. And if acceleration is happening, it means our velocity is changing. It's either getting farther away from or closer to zero, um, either in the positive or the negative side. If we wanted to look at this example again, where we have this red dot and this green dot that are racing, and the green dot's clearly faster, we can plot that on a displacement versus time graph by looking at where the position is at these given uh, intervals of time for both the red and for the green. And notice how the green is traveling twice as far in the same duration of time, the dots are twice as far apart from each other. Um, that is al allowing us to make this graph. And we, we looked at the graph before and said, oh, the green is traveling faster. And we know that because green is steeper. Um, well, we can actually assign a value to that. The way that we assign steepness or quantify that is through the function of slope. Or if you are in calculus, you might be talking about that as a function of a derivative. Uh, same idea. Uh, in this case, we're not going to need calculus. We're just going to look at a straight line slope. So to find the slope of this red line, uh, slope is just rise over run, or the y values divided by the x values over a certain uh, between two points. So if we measure a rise of two meters uh, at the same time that we see a run, or the, the x distance being two seconds, um, again, meters here coming from the displacement, it changed two meters going from four to six at the same time that it changed two seconds going from four to six. Slope would just be the rise divided by the run, two meters divided by two seconds, and that gives us one meter per second. Meter per second should be a unit that you are very familiar with. In this case, we're getting it just by taking the units for the Y divided by the units for the X, meters divided by seconds. And one meter per second corresponds to this dot diagram here as well. Uh, every second, we took a snapshot of where this ball was, and it looks like it traveled one meter every second. Um, so that checks out in a couple different ways. If we're going to do the same thing for this green graph over here. We still have a rise of two, but we go up to every one second that it's traveling, um, which will give us two meters divided by one second, or two meters per second. Over here on our, our diagram, uh, we see that it travels two meters in between each one second exposure, um, so two meters per second. And of course, if we were traveling faster, three meters per second, four, and so on, it would just get steeper and steeper on that picture. Which means that if we have a displacement versus time graph, something that we have meters on the y and seconds on the x, the slope will always give us meters divided by seconds, which is the velocity. So. If you have a displacement versus time, you can find and calculate its velocity just by calculating slope. We don't even have to have a graph to do that, though. If we look back on those graphs, the, the y was always distance or displacement, the x was always time, and we we're always taking y divided by x, which would give us essentially distance divided by time if we were finding the average speed and displacement divided by time if we're finding the average velocity. The differences here really comes down to vector versus scalar. Um, speed and distance are both scalar, which means that they do not care about the direction. Uh, it also means that they're always going to be positive. 
that you could find the average speed if you're running around a track and coming back to the same spot. It doesn't matter that you end up where you started. Um, it just matters how fast you're moving as you are going through that. Average velocity, though, is going to include direction, uh, which means you could have a scenario that's super annoying, and IB asks about this every once in a while, that gives you a question like this, where it says, uh, you run around a track, and you go uh, 400 meters all the way around the track and end up exactly where you started. And you did that in, say, I don't know, one minute. You can calculate your speed just by taking 400 meters divided by 60 seconds. But your velocity, since your displacement is technically zero because you ended up exactly where you started, your average velocity is also technically zero. Um, is that a useful thing? Not really. Uh, but every once in a while, you might see a question thrown in there to, to try to trick you um, because velocity is technically the displacement divided by time, which means you need to find the displacement first. Now, if we wanted to use this to calculate something, um, it's a really simple equation, but one that you should be really, really familiar with and comfortable with. Uh, last year, in 2019, uh, Elliot Kipchoge broke the, the record. Uh, it was the, the first person to ever run a sub two hour marathon, uh, which is insane. It's so fast, which we'll see in a little bit. Little bit. Um, but we can calculate his average speed in miles per hour. Come on, he says. Elliot Kipchoge has the hand of history on his shoulder. He has less than 200 meters to go. Elliot Kipchoge, let's keep an eye on the clock. Into the final 20 seconds. Elliot Kipchoge. Whoa! Has got his shoulder. 140. Oh, oh, oh. 140 for the unofficial oh, time. There's his wife. Elliot, Elliot Kipchoge storms into the history books in Vienna. One so, like I said, insanely fast. Uh, he didn't even look tired after doing that. Those pacers that were behind him, they swapped out every couple miles because. Nobody else could keep up the pace uh, that it took to run that over a long duration of time. So they were there to block the wind, to make it a little bit easier for him. Uh, but they were not able to keep up with him even at the end. Now, we can calculate his average speed during this entire two-hour marathon uh, by using this simple equation, that velocity is just distance over time. If you want uh, units of meters per second or miles per hour, you're always going to take your distance and divide it by the time. Now, in this case, the distance is 26.2 miles divided by just a hair under two hours. I've just converted that into a decimal form, 1.99 hours, which will give you a whopping 13.2 miles per hour, which is faster than I feel comfortable riding my bike over a duration of time. I can't imagine running that for an entire marathon. The other thing I want to mention here is technically what we're calculating there is average speed, not instantaneous speed. It doesn't mean that he was moving at exactly 13.2 miles per hour at every moment in that marathon. He actually sped up at the end there when he saw the finish line. Um, so what we're calculating is the average, the total time divided by the total, total distance divided by the total time. Now I could plot out a couple different scenarios. I could say we're going really constant. Uh, following this red line, or I could say we're going kind of slower and then we go backwards a little bit and then we go really, really fast, but we end at exactly the same time. That means that these two lines technically have the same average uh, velocity or average speed because they ended at the same position at exactly the same time. And those are the only two inputs you need to calculate the average. But they have very different instantaneous velocity throughout. Instantaneous velocity is calculated by looking at the slope. So here we can see that we have a shallow slope, so it's not moving as fast. Here we can see we have a negative slope, so we're actually moving backwards. And here we can see we have a very steep slope, so we're moving very fast. So this green line, they're going all over the place, but in the end, their outcome is the same. Now, if we want to look, again, at a velocity versus graph, our velocity versus time graph for an object that's speeding up. You may remember a graph that we made the other day uh, showing this object getting faster and faster. And we know it's faster and faster because at the same time interval, the spacing is increasing. And if I place 
these vectors here representing the instantaneous velocity over that time, that second, and plot that in, we get a graph that looks something like this. Uh, basically saying that we started at about zero meters per second, but then we got faster and faster and faster as it went. Um, how fast we're getting faster is its own quantity, and we can calculate that quantity by also looking at the slope. So the rate of change is always going to be a slope sort of function. Here our rise, uh, the y is going to be 2 meters per second, and the x is 7 seconds. If I wanted to find the slope, it's just going to be that 2 meters per second, this unit's important because that's what the unit for y is, divided by 7 seconds. 2 meters per second divided by 7 seconds gives us 0 .0, 0 0.29 meters per second per second. Um, that's a crazy looking unit. There's another way that we can write that that you might be more familiar with, and that's meters per second squared. We just combine those two seconds at the end. And then, of course, in IB, a lot of times that's presented as meters seconds to the minus two, um, just using that negative exponent notation. Now, this number here is telling you how much faster you're moving every second. So that means at zero seconds, you're not moving at all, um, zero meters per second, but then one second later, you'd be moving at 0.29 seconds. Another second after that, you're increased by another 0.29. So you can use that to figure out how fast you're getting faster. The slope, basically, of that line. Which means that slope of displacement time gave us velocity, meters divided by seconds. Slope of velocity versus time is meters per second divided by seconds, which is acceleration. One last thing that you can do with this velocity versus time graph is you can calculate how far it actually moves. In this case, if we look at this uh, green ball that was moving at two meters per second earlier, um, two meters per second for all three seconds that we saw it traveling, gave us a graph that looks something like this. Now, from this picture, I actually know how far it went, just because that's the picture of its moving. Uh, it went six meters. So there are a couple different ways that I can use this graph to help me figure out that it went six meters. The first of which is by using this equation. This velocity is distance over time. If I rearrange that to solve for distance, knowing that the velocity is always the same, it just rearranges, so distance is equal to v times t. The velocity here was always 2 meters per second, and the time that that was happening was 3 seconds. So we can plug that in, 2 meters per second times 3 seconds. Those seconds actually cancel each other out, so we're left with just 6 meters. Um, which, if you really think about it, if I said you're going 2 meters every second, and you do that 3 seconds in a row, 2 meters plus 2 meters is 4 plus another 2 is 6. Um, so you can calculate displacement even though this graph doesn't show you displacement outright. Now another way to do this is actually to calculate an area. Um, so every graph is going to create some sort of shape with the x-axis. Notice here I'm not drawing that all the way down to the bottom of my graph because technically like this isn't the bottom. Like It could keep going negative forever. Uh, but the x-axis is always fixed in there. So we're looking at the area here between the graph and the zero line. And in this case, that area is base times height, because it's a rectangle, so 3 seconds times 2 meters per second, which also gives me 6 meters. So if you have a velocity versus time graph, another way that you can figure out how far it goes is by using displacement. For those of you in calculus, this is what we call the integral. Um, in this case, we don't need to use integrals. We can just use geometry to calculate areas, um, but it's the same general concept. You can actually use this, though, even if it's not constant. So here, these three questions are something that I should be able to ask you about any particular graph uh, that you're given. So here we have a graph that goes from 0 to 4 in 4 seconds. The velocity of 4 seconds is just going to be whatever we read from the graph. 4 seconds, it's going to be 4, 4 meters per second. That's where I see it. The acceleration of this is how fast is it getting faster? Um, so it says from 1 to 4 seconds, but it looks like it wouldn't matter because it's always going to be the same slope. The slope, meters per second divided by seconds, gives me the acceleration. So here it goes up 4 over 4, uh, 
um, which means the slope is just one meter per second squared. Every second is moving one meter per second faster than it was a second before. And if I want to find displacement here, uh, I'm going to use the area of this graph. The area here is actually this triangle. Um, and the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So it's one half times four times four. Uh, four times four is 16 divided by two is eight. Um, so that means that in this four seconds, uh, at four seconds, it's moving four meters per second with a slope acceleration of one meter per second squared and a total area, total displacement of eight meters. Now we can do the same thing for a graph that's in the negative part uh, of this velocity versus time graph. So the velocity at four seconds here is actually going to be a negative four meters per second because it's moving backward this whole time. The acceleration uh, is going to be the slope. That's a negative four. It goes down four over four. Uh, so negative one meter per second squared. It just means it's changing in the negative direction. And then the displacement here is going to be this triangle here. Notice I've drawn this again, bounded between the x-axis and the graph. So it's possible, I call this area under the curve, but it's possible that it's actually above the line. It's just the area that's bounded with the graph and the x-axis. Now, since it is below the x-axis, we're actually going to treat that as a negative area because the displacement is in the negative direction. If you're always moving at a negative velocity, you can bet that your uh, displacement is going to be in the negative direction from where you started. So here, it's one half base times height, one half times four times a negative four, because the height is below the x axis, will give you an area of negative eight meters. Um, so your displacement is technically, in this case, a negative eight. You've moved backwards eight meters. All right, let's look at this for one that doesn't start at zero. Uh, first, I would like you to calculate what is the velocity at four seconds? Okay, again, you don't really have to calculate here. Uh, you can just look at it and just say, yep, it's four, four meters per second. That's all there is. Uh, then go ahead and calculate what is the acceleration between uh, from zero to four seconds? How fast is it getting faster? Again, acceleration on a velocity versus time graph is simply the slope. The slope in this case, it goes up two over four. The slope is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Now the displacement here uh, actually takes the place of two shapes. Uh, there is a green rectangle and a purple triangle. So with that, I would like you to calculate what is the overall displacement? How far has it traveled? Looks like the green rectangle is just four times two base times height, that's eight. The purple triangles, one half, four times two, one half times the base times height, so one half times four times two, that's four. Add them together and you get an area of 12. So the total displacement is 12. Finally, I wanna show you one here that looks a little bit different because it crosses the x-axis somewhere. Uh, if I ask you what's the velocity at three seconds, again, you just read it. Uh, it's going to be negative two meters per second. If I ask you what's the acceleration from one to three seconds, um, you just find the slope. It goes down four over two. The acceleration is negative two meters per second squared. But here's the trickiest one. If it crosses zero, now we have some areas that are going to be positive, like that one and that one and some areas that are technically going to be negative because we are drawing our shapes we're shading this in from the graph to the x-axis so we end up with an area of two an area of one and an area of negative one add those all up you're going forward two then forward another one then backward one you end up with an area of two so your overall displacement is two meters so again, the graphs are going to tell you more here. If you have a displacement graph, the key thing that you're often doing is just reading the slope to find velocity. If you have a velocity versus time graph, there's a couple key things that we're looking for. We're trying to find the acceleration by using slope or using area under the curve to find displacement.